Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the control of differential drive robots so that they can basically go through a desired trajectory. In the videos on my channel under the playlist robotics, you have seen the kinematics for differential drive robots as well as kinetics or the equations of motion. But so far, we have not discussed how to apply a control to these nonlinear governing equations so that the robot can follow your desired trajectory at a desired speed. So that's the goal for this video. Hopefully you like it. If you look at the video I have on the channel for the equations of motion for a differential drive robot, you probably can see this equation here, which is kind of typical for a robot, right? You have basically the term involving the uh, accelerations. You have this term here that involves basically uh, if you have any centripetal or Coriolis accelerations. And uh, the tau is the input to the system. And here the CT times lambda was the term due to the constraints of the robot. Because a differential drive robot, if you remember, cannot move uh, sideways, right? So align this YR, the uh, body YR direction, Y dot R is zero, right? The non-holonomic constraint. This robot cannot move sideways or laterally. It can only go forward and it can go along a circle if you want to go to the left or right, right? So uh, please look at the corresponding video on my channel where I have derived this equation of motion for the robot. The only difference you would see is in that lecture, you probably will see this constraint term here added as negative C transpose lambda. Here I'm using positive just to correct for uh, the uh, direction of the friction because if you remember, when I talked about the equations of motion uh, when um, there are constraints and we added the Lagrangian term here, Lagrangian multiplier and the C term, which comes from the Fafian constraint, uh, if you remember, I mentioned that this lambda, you'll turn out that you'll find out that these are the forces of the constraint. Like in this case, this is the traction force, the friction below the tire. So here I'm going to use positive instead of negative here, just to correct for the direction of motion. And uh, this is my governing equation, right? Again, the C matrix is the matrix that describes all of the no slipping conditions, right? So this comes from slipping condition, right? Or conditions, because the tires, both of them on the left and right, should not slide with respect to the ground. No slipping conditions. And um, we wrote them... as Fafian constraints. This C is the matrix for that. And when I say the video on my channel, again, it's this guy here. If you go under playlist robotics, you see this video says equations of motion for differential drive robots. So I explain everything, how to find the C matrix and so on and so forth. So um, this is... Um, your equation of motion and then when we combine the equations of motion with the constraint equations we could find the lambda right we could find basically the uh, friction force the tracking force under each tire and if you remember this lambda is a function of your input torque and we know that's true correct if you apply a lot of torque on your tire, right, let's say when you're driving, if you apply the accelerator pedal so hard or so little, clearly the amount of friction generated under your tires, because you're changing the torque on the tires, will be different, right? So this lambda that you see in this equation is not independent from your input. This lambda is a function of input, okay? 
So now the question is, what should I choose for this tau? What should I choose for this tau? If I want my robot to follow a desired trajectory, any, let's say, to make it simple, the function y equal x squared. If I want it to start at origin or close to origin and follow what? A parabola. What kind of torque should I apply to my what? To my DC motors that are running my wheels left and right. What is that? How should I apply the torque? And not only I want it to follow that desired trajectory, I want it to maintain a constant speed of V desired. So I don't want it to go to with, with variable speed. I want it to traverse the path at a desired constant speed. Okay, what should I choose for torque? Now, clearly, you know, your governing equations are nonlinear. As you know, the B has nonlinearity in it. The M has nonlinearity in it. C has and everything. So uh, what kind of control would you use? Again, if you go back to my channel, under playlist robotics, one of the control methods that I mentioned to you that is kind of like the best we had for motion control was this guy, multivariate centralized robot control with feedback linearization. So the goal of this nonlinear control feedback linearization was we get rid of the nonlinear terms by the torque we provide also we control all of the joints at the same time and we make them follow the desired uh, basically input signals and we made the error to asymptotically go to zero using a, a PD or PID controller, correct? And if you go and look at this uh, video here, if you remember, we had two layers of control we had a uh, basically an inner loop and an outer loop where the inner loop basically creates your torque based on the um, PID control or PD control and your outer loop control as you can see here will generate your desired acceleration AQ right so if you go and look at what we had we had the inner loop and we had the outer loop. Here, U corresponds to our tau, torque, right? Which uh, you can see it has this nonlinear terms in it. So when you put it on the right-hand side, those nonlinear terms would cancel out. You're only down to M times Q double dot equals to MAQ. If M is invertible, then Q double dot equals AQ. And then you choose your AQ based on here only a PD control and a fit forward so that your error asymptotically converges to zero. So that is the goal. That is the control law that we're going to use. Multivariable centralized control with feedback linearization. Okay, that's what we're going to do. But here there is one difference. What is the difference? Back here when we had the governing equation, if you look, it was mq double dot plus cq plus g equal u. There was no term on the left-hand side that was a function of the right-hand side. Everything on the left was independent from u. There was no term of u on the left. u was only on the right, not in here. Here, my c transpose lambda term does depend on the right-hand side tau. So before I can use what I have here, I have to rewrite these two equations, this one plus the lambda one. I have to combine them into one equation where the left-hand side has no tau in it. Then I can use this strategy of the control. Okay, so how should I do that? That's the first step you have to take. So let's go ahead. We write it as mq double dot plus b plus C transpose, and here I'm going to replace the lambda into the left-hand side. So there is a negative, so I can bring that negative right here and make it negative. And then C M inverse C transpose, the whole thing inverse times C M inverse times tau minus B and then plus c dot times q dot. This is equal to tau. 
okay and now what i need to do is to find this tau term here and then take it to this side and the rest of it stays on the left side so now i only have tau on the right hand side only that is the appropriate equation of motion of, i can apply the controller to so let's do that here and for that it is going to be what it is going to be mq double dot plus b now if you look at this term here the term that doesn't have tau it has this negative c transpose inverse of that matrix times c dot q dot so let's write it down and then it has this negative of c times cm times negative b there is a negative here there is a negative here so that becomes a positive Okay, there we go. Now the left hand side, if you look, there is no tau in it. Now the term with the tau, I'll take to the right hand side. If you look, this whole coefficient for tau, this guy, is negative. When I take it to this side, it becomes what? As you can see here in the red, it becomes positive. Correct. That's what we have. And uh, so that term times tau, and this is tau. So it's going to be some big term times tau. And what is that? Well, it is going to be C transpose times C m inverse c transpose inverse times c m inverse and then plus i i for this term this tau is like i times tau there we go now you got what you got your uh, equation of motion where all the tau is on the left, on the right hand side, and all of the other terms are on the left hand side. Now, to this one, I can apply my uh, inner outer loop control. How? Let's take a look. So, now what should I choose for tau? If you look back at the um, feedback linearization, what I need to add should get away all of these terms. So I'm only down to MQ double dot on the left hand side. So definitely all of these terms underlined in red, they should be included in the control loop, control law that I choose for tau in the inner control uh, uh, law. But not just that, because when I choose all of those, then this term here is also multiplied with the tau from the left-hand side. So I need to have the inverse of this guy in the tau on the left. So when this is multiplied by the tau, this one with its inverse cancel each other. So I'm now down only to... The terms in the tau that is like maq plus all of these guys so what should i choose for tau let's write it down so tau is gonna be the inverse of this matrix let me see if i can copy this whole thing up oh, not cut copy there we go. So it should be the inverse of that. And then multiplied by what I need. Okay, so inverse of this now times what? Times M times AQ, which is what I need to have, and then plus 
all of these terms that are underlined in red. And again, let me see if I can copy them and save some time instead of writing them. There we go. Control C and then please control, bring it here for me. If it's too big, we can resize it a little bit. That's the good thing about OneNote, huh? You can do everything you want. There we go. So now if I apply this torque, what's going to happen? Well, that whole big term, let's give the equation some number. So if I call this equation number one, and this is that's my governing equation, and two is my inner control loop, right? So this is my inner control. So if I plug in two into one, what's gonna happen? This term, right is on the left of tau when tau is here then this term is multiplied from the left with its inverse so they cancel each other therefore this entire left hand side of equation one will be equal to this term in the bracket and what happens when they are set equal well, the B terms, the C transpose terms, all of the way down to C dot Q dot, and this last term, C transpose, all the way down to CM inverse B, they are in both sides, so you can see them, right? These terms would be canceled. So all you will get is MQ double dot equals to what? MAQ. And if M inverse exists, And you can multiply both sides by M inverse, your equation will be simplified down to Q double dot equals to AQ. Simple as that. Now, what kind of system is this? Definitely a linear system. My system was nonlinear, but I what? I canceled the nonlinear terms by the way I chose my uh, control. That's why we call this feedback linearization. Linearization because we made the nonlinear system linear. Why do we call it feedback linearization? Because in order to form the M matrix, the B matrix, the C matrix, this Q dot, C dot, and so on, we need to have feedback from Q and Q dot. So using feedbacks from Q and Q dot, we can form this equation too. We can form this control signal and get rid of all of the nonlinear terms. And of course, this getting rid of will happen if and only if our model of the system is almost perfect. So we exactly know the B matrix, we exactly know the C matrix and the M matrix. If we don't know them, we have to use an adaptive control or a robust control, or we do system identification to identify them first, then apply such a feedback linearization idea. So here we assume our knowledge from M, B, and C matrix is almost perfect, or at least very close, so I can get the maximum cancellation I can. So this is going to be what? Q double dot equal to AQ, and now this is the part that your outer control loop comes in. Okay, so let's apply the outer control. So now, if I call this equation number three, now I should choose this AQ such that the error in the Q will go to what? Will go to zero, right? So here I call it the outer control law. And what should I choose for AQ? Again, the goal is Q error, which is defined as Q desired minus Q. The limit of this Q error will go to zero as T goes to what? Infinity. So that's the goal. What should I choose now for this AQ? 
such that the error asymptotically converges to zero. What do we choose here? We choose a combination of PD control plus what? Plus a fit forward. So we say AQ is equal to QD double dot. This is the fit forward term because this term does not depend on the feedback from the system. This does not depend on Q or Q dot or Q double dot. This is just a predefined signal QD double dot that you can have ahead of time and just pass the second derivative of it into the system. So this is called the fit forward term plus the PD term. P is like again KP times Q error. And your uh, D term is like KD times the derivative of the error. If I call this equation 4, and if I combine 3 and 4, what's going to happen? So from 3 and 4, we can have QE double dot plus KD times QE dot plus KP times QE equals 0. It's a second order homogeneous differential equation. And if we choose our KD and KP properly, we can guarantee that this is going to happen. And what are your typical choices for KP and KD? They are like your KP is going to be omega squared, right? And your KD is like 2 omega. So your KPs are like a bunch of omega i squares. And your KDs are the same omegas, but two times them instead of squaring them. That guarantees that your QE will have a solution like A times E to the negative omega IT plus B times T times E to the negative omega IT. And since these omegas are all positive, Clearly, all of these negative exponentials will go to zero as time gets bigger and bigger, and the magnitude of the omega controls the speed of the convergence. The bigger you can choose them, it means, of course, bigger gains, but the convergence is going to happen faster. Okay? The convergence is going to happen faster, and um, uh, Hopefully, you'll get the convergence. Now, if your system ever shows what? So this is the fit forward term plus the PD control. If your system ever shows steady state error, then you will add a what? You will add also a plus KI times integral of q e d t. You can add it and make it a what? Make it a PID control. If the signal has noise, you can add a filter to your derivative term so the derivative does not grow very big. So you use the PID plus filter. Okay, so what kind of control do you use here? PD, PID, PID plus filter, it depends on whether you have a steady state error or not, whether you have noise or not. In my case, I'm going to do simulation, so I do not really need noise filtering. But in real life, all of the signals that you get from Q here, they have noise in them. QD can be a predefined signal, does not necessarily have it, unless you get it from some sensors because you are doing real-time tracking of something, right? If this is not predefined, it might have noise too, but Q definitely always have noise, so you need to use PID plus filter. And I, again, depends on whether your system shows a steady state error or not. In my case, again, in simulation, I don't need filter, but uh, uh, when I experimented with the system, there is a little bit of steady state error, so I added very small amount of integral also so i added plus the integral term but i made sure this gain is very small to avoid instability in my system 
Okay, so with these two control laws that you can see inner and outer that I can put for you inside some green box or something, this is one of them. And the other one is this guy. With these two, I am able to control the system and make it what? Follow the desired trajectory. Now, there is one uh, other small amount of detail that I need to talk about, and that is about this QD here. So what is the Q for this robot? If you look at the lecture I mentioned, that is about the um, equation of motion for uh, differential drive robots. Let me go back. If you look at that, you see there are five elements in the Q. Okay, so um, they are X, Y, theta and then phi 1 and phi 2 or phi right and phi left so the q the generalized coordinates has five elements in it let me see if i can find it for you and uh, you see here this is the part i mentioned that i use negative c transpose lambda in this case, uh, we need to go positive C transpose lambda. Otherwise, you see that the robot moves backward, really, instead of forward. So keep that in mind. And where is the Q here? As we talked about Q here. As you can see, Q is chosen to be X, Y of the center of the chassis, theta of the chassis and then phi of the right tire and the left tire, shown by phi 1 and phi 2, okay? So that's my Q. So when I say Q desired, which I need to have for my control law, right, this guy, or the derivative of that, Q dot desired, because Q E dot is like Q dot D minus Q dot. So I need to have Q dot D as well. What are these? So Q D desired is what? It is X desired, Y desired, theta desired, that you can see them, then phi 1 desired, and phi 2 desired. Correct? Where can I get this? Because my X and Y, I can get from this curve, right? At any point x, y is like x squared. What is theta? Theta is the slope of the tangent line, so it is going to be tangent inverse of y prime, which is like 2x desired. So I can find this. And then how do I find the corresponding angle of the two tires desired? So I need to find q desired. Or let's say I need to find q dot desired. I can find the derivative of them. If I want them independently, then if I want just want x, not x dot, then I can integrate it versus time, right? And I also need what? The double dot here. So not only I need q dot, I also need q, and I also need what? qd double dot. So I need all of these signals. The question is, how do I get them? Now, what I will do here for you, I'll calculate your QD dot for you. And once I have QD dot, I integrate it to get QD, and I take a derivative of it in Simulink to get what? QD double dot. So my goal is how to find QD dot. And it's not so trivial. Why is it not trivial? Because I have a constraint in my system. Not only Y has to be X squared, I also should choose my x or x dot such that the speed of traversing the curve is what? Vd. So these two things should be considered at the same time so that I can find x dot d, y dot d, and so on and so forth. How do I do that, right? That is the important thing. And I'm going to explain how you can 
generate these signals right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So, first let's talk about the x dot d. Where do I get x dot d? Well, this is the first one. Well, what is VD? VD is the speed of the robot along the path. And since the position of the robot is given with X and Y, so when they say VD, the speed, it is going to be what? The square root of the VX squared, correct, plus the VY squared, right? We are using the rectangular coordinate. And what is Vx? Well, Vx is the time derivative of x. But since it's the desired thing, this should be Vx desired. And this should be Vy desired. So this is, as I said, derivative of x d. So it's like x dot d squared. And this is like what? Y dot d squared. And if I square both sides, this is what you will get. That vd squared is x dot d squared plus y dot d squared. And how much should that vd squared be? In my case, I want it to be one unit. I want the speed of traversal of the path to be one unit, one meters per second. Can I choose a different number? Absolutely. This is the number you choose as a parameter in your control, how fast you want it to travel the path. So this is my first equation. Now, what is y dot d as a function of x dot d? Can I relate them to each other for sure? Because remember, your y d is what? Your x d squared. If you take a time derivative from both sides of this equation, you will get what? You will get y dot is time derivative of x d squared, which is 2 x d and times x dot d. Here we are using the chain rule, right? Because I'm not taking derivative of the right-hand side with respect to xd. I'm taking derivative of right-hand side with respect to time. So first, I take derivative with respect to xd and multiply it by the derivative of xd with respect to time. If that is the case, then x dot d, let's solve for x dot d. x dot d is going to be what? Remember, I'm plugging it back here. So what would you get? You get 1 equals x d dot squared plus, if you plug this back here and square it, it is going to be 2xd squared times x dot d squared. And you factor out the um, x dot d squared, this is what you will get. That 1 is equal to 1 plus 2xd squared, the whole thing times x dot d squared, divide both sides by the bracket term, and you'll get what? You'll get this guy. So the first one, the first element of my qd dot, this one, I derive the formula for it. x dot d squared, right? That is 1 over, or in general, vd squared over square root of 1 plus 2xd, the whole thing squared. Right? And then you have to take a square root, so that square root will take care of this one. So this is your xd dot. I found it. Now, what is yd dot? Well, yd dot, we already found the relation for it. yd dot, if you look back, your yd dot is what? 2xd times xd dot. Well, this is your xd dot, just multiplied by a 2xd. That is yd dot. So your yd dot is what? Your yd dot is just multiply that whole thing by 2xd. Done. That's your yd dot. Now, what is your theta d dot? The rate of change of angle. 
Well, first I have to find theta d and then take a time derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. This is this one. Well, theta, as you know, is the slope of the tangent line. Right? It is arc tangent of y prime. y prime is 2xt because that's the derivative of y... Uh, sorry. That's the derivative of yd with respect to xt. And that's 2xt. That's theta. Now I take a time derivative from this. So it's going to be theta d prime. And now time derivative of arc tangent. Well, time derivative of arc tangent of anything is the derivative of the inside, which is here, over 1 plus that inside squared. So it's u dot over 1 plus u squared, right? This is the derivative of arc tangent of u. We know it from calculus. There we go. So I got it. If I have that xt dot, whatever it is, multiplied by a 2 and then divided by this guy, which is like the denominator to the power 2. So when you multiply, it's going to be that square root to the power 3. Right? So it is going to be like what? If I replace it, this theta d dot is going to be like... 2 vd, correct? It was 2xd dot divided by that, and that makes this square root the whole thing to power 3. There we go. The third one is known. So now just the rate of change or the angular velocities of the two tires in the desired situation. Phi 1 d dot and phi 2 d dot. Let's find them. And then I guess we know everything to apply the control. So and that is here. If you look, we know the relations between the angular velocities of the wheels and the... Um, forward the speed of the center of the chassis and the angular rotation of the chassis. So R over 2, R here is the radius of the two wheels or the two tires. R over 2 dot phi 2 dot minus phi 1 dot is the speed. And the negative R over 2 W, 2 W is the width of the chassis. So here, if I go back to the shape, this distance from here to here, this is the diameter of each tire. So this is like 2R. And the width of the chassis is this guy here. This guy here is 2W. Okay? And that times phi 1 dot plus phi 2 dot is the omega of the chassis or the theta dot D of the chassis. And here, the sign of these two are different from the video on my channel about kinematics of the differential drive. Why different? Because in the video where we drive this equation of motion and everything, right, the direction for phi 1 and phi 2 or phi left and phi right are not the same. They are opposite. Okay, let me show you again. In this video where we derived everything, uh, if you look at the directions that are considered for phi 1 and phi 2, you see phi 1 is counterclockwise, phi 2 is clockwise, right? While in the video for kinematics only, which is like here, Either in this one, host controlled by kinematics only, or in this one, kinematics of differential drive. In both of these, phi left and phi right, or 1 and 2, are in the same direction. So that's why you see the signs are different. Don't be confused. So if you look at these two equations, now, so far, 
I know my VD, it's a parameter that you can control. And my theta D, I just derived. I know it. So if I look at these two equations, clearly these two equations are what? Two unknowns and two equations. And they are linear equations. So from this, I can uh, look at the coefficient matrix, which is R over 2, negative R over 2. And negative r over 2w and negative r 2w, the coefficients of phi 1 dot and phi 2 dot, inverted multiplied by the right hand side, which is known, and that gives you what? These two extra things. By the way, since the theta d dot and v, they are both desired, then it makes these phi 1 and phi 2 also what? It makes these guys also desired. There we go. So if I call this equation star or double star, maybe. So if I go back up here, both of these can be found through the equation double star. So now I am able to what? I'm able to generate my QD dot. And as I said, once I know this one, I can integrate it to get this one. And I can take a time derivative of it to get what? To get the double dot. So now it is possible for me to form all of the terms in my inner control loop, the uh, outer control loop, this equation four. Now I'm ready to apply my control. Now I have written a uh, MATLAB script in which you define the parameters and then this script calls your Simulink model to basically um, uh, provide the simulation of equations of motion and this is my Simulink. This is the user defined function I wrote that applies the equation of motion of the robot. This is the inner loop control. This is the outer loop control. And this block here is the one that generates your QD dot. So it basically applies all of these equations that I have shown for you. All of those equations are really uh, done and applied inside this block. Then Q double dot comes out of the robot. I double integrate it with initial conditions and that gives me my X, my Y, my theta. From here, also, I send out to the workspace my x desired and y desired, as you can see. And then I can what? I can do the plot. The numbers I used here and the initial conditions are provided to you. The mass of the chassis of the robot is 2 kilograms. The mass of each wheel is 50 grams. The width of the chassis is 2W, which is 30, uh, 30 centimeters. The radius of each tire is 6 centimeters. The thickness of each wheel or tire is one centimeter. The offset between center of mass of the chassis and the center of the wheels is zero. So they are on the top of each other. The mass moment of inertia for the chassis is this much in kilogram meter squared. <clears throat> uh, the initial condition for the two wheels are zero. The initial angle of the robot is zero. So it means the robot is facing to the right. The initial x of the robot is zero, but to make it a little bit different, I made the y of the robot non-zero. So the robot does not perfectly start on the path, right? The robot starts basically here and facing forward like this. And the goal is to force this robot to go toward the path and then what? Stick to the path and go on. Now, when it goes toward the path, it shows a little bit <coughs> overshoot. And that's what you typically see in any control law because of the momentum of the system. But the derivative will damp out the overshoot fast and bring it and make it follow the path. And as I said, I added a little bit integral term. So the offset between the actual trajectory and the traversed trajectory is minimal, close to zero. So I'm gonna simulate it for you in a second. But these are my initial conditions. All of the dots are also zero. So you don't see them here, but all of the dots. 
So x dot of 0 is equal to y dot of 0 equals to theta dot of 0. And phi 1 dot and phi 2 dot, they are all also 0. It's a second order system. You need to apply all positions and velocities. I found that using five seconds or giving five seconds to the robot will allow it to go through all of the path that I want from a specific X to a specific X. So you have to tell it to go from which X to which X and then to go, right? Because this Y equal X squared can keep going forever. You just want to go only along so much of this path. And I found for the range of the x that I provided in this problem, or I wanted to go in this problem, giving it five seconds at the speed of vd equal one meter per second, that's enough. So I gave it five seconds to go through the path. And the gains that I tuned here, and I found they are working very well, are kp of 5, kd of 2, and ki of only 0.01. Okay? By the way, I am going to share with you the downloading link for the Simulink and for what? For the script. So you can have them, you can play with them. Just pay attention. If you change initial conditions or the traversal speed, you need to retune your controller. Otherwise, you'll see big deviations of the traverse pad versus the desired trajectory. Okay? So you need to retune it. So here are my parameters. Here I'm calling the Simulink, getting the data out of it. And here I'm doing a simple animation of the robot as it goes through the path. So first, let me run it for you. Here we go. The red is the desired pad. The blue is the actual pad it travels. And the black one with that extra line, that is the robot. As you can see right that line shows the angle theta so you see that the robot is perfectly uh, after a little bit of time and killing the overshoot because as i said it overshoots then it goes back you see a little bit undershoot here but it's not too much and you see clearly now the robot can what from this point on can follow the path as I said, the distance I wanted it to go is a little bit more than 2 meters in the x direction. And y, a little bit more than 4 meters, of course. So again, you see that the blue will fall on the red, the desired, after a little bit of overshoot. And again, you can mess up with the gains and make this response faster or slower. Uh, of course, the faster you make it, the bigger overshoots you're going to have, and you need bigger eye gain to remove the uh, steady state error. So this is completely tuned, and it's working. Let me run it one more time for you. It's the second time you run it. Typically, it goes faster. Here we go. You see the robot started facing right, and now it's perfectly following the path. I use a pause command here in my simulation to make it slower. If you want to go faster, just change it to a smaller number and you see it goes very fast. Okay, but again, my goal was really for uh, you to visualize everything very well. Okay, so this is the control of a differential drive robot to follow a specific uh, path. Let me show you inside my functions. This is the functions for robot. It takes the torque. It generates the Q double dots. Right? You can see. You give it Q dot and Q to generate matrices B and lambda and C and everything. It gets the torque and it generates the Q double dots at the end which is basically this first equation here. This one right it takes p to the other side it takes c transpose lambda to the other side multiply by m inverse and gives you q double dot once you get q double dot then you can go ahead and double integrate it with initial conditions to get what 
to get your uh, cues, all of the cues. Uh, this is the inner loop control that generates the torque based on this big equation here. This equation uh, number two. So that block only applies equation number two here. That you can see, it needs still Q and Q dots, and it needs the AQ, which you can see here. And it generates the torque. Now, uh, the outer loop generates the AQ, so that applies the equation number four for you. And that's what you can see. The Q dot is coming, Q dot desired. The Q dot is coming. They are subtracted to get Q dot error multiplied by the D gain. The Q dot desired is integrated to get you QD. The Q is coming. That's the error multiplied by KP. So this is P term. This is D term. I also have the I term. So the Q error is integrated and then multiplied by I gain. So this is I. This is P. This is D. And then QD dot that comes in. It's time derivative of that. Gives you QD double dot. So this is the fit forward term. And these three terms are your PID basically. So this is all of them together. And this is the uh, function that will generate for you your QD double dot. So that is all of these guys here on the top. All of these ones. And here is your constant VD, right? And uh, here it is also called VD or VD here. That's also VD. Let me call it VD1 because you cannot rename both of them to be the same thing here. Or no, actually it's this, this VD. This is, what is this? This is the one here. This is this one here that you can see. This one in this equation. That's that guy. It's not VD. So you see VD here. This is XD multiplied by 2 and then squared. So this is 2X squared plus 1 and then taken the square root of. So it is basically this denominator. And then VD is divided by that, and that's what you can do with the divide block. So that is XD dot integrated, that gives you XD. Then multiplying it by other terms, here is YD dot. And then all sorts of other things, right? So this is your XD dot, YD dot, this is your theta D dot, this is your phi 1 D dot, and phi 2 D dot. And all of them are combined using a multiplexer and send out as QD dot. So this is the overall thing. And again, this is the script that runs it. One last thing that I see and I need to uh, mention is in this video where I talked about the equations of motion, the C matrix needs to be reordered. The C matrix is not correct because the order of Q is X, Y, theta, phi 1, phi 2, not the other way around, okay? So um, the actual C matrix with proper order is this guy. It is 1, 0, 0, R cosine theta over 2, negative R cosine theta over 2. 0, 1, 0, R sine theta over 2, negative R sine theta over 2, and then 0, 0, 1, half of R, w, R over W, and half of R over W. So just make sure that the C matrix here is uh, corrected for the mistake that was in that previous video, and uh, that's the C matrix that is used all over the place. Other than that, I guess everything is uh, settled and clear. So hopefully this video was useful to you and you learn how to apply the control, the multivariable centralized control, inner outer loop control to a differential drive to make it follow your desired path at a desired speed. Thank you so much for your attention and I will see you in my next video.